So let's discuss now about the ionic product of the water. Water we know is a poor conductor of the electricity. This is because water is a weak electrolyte. Water dissociates uh, to a very small extent. Okay, that's why the water is a poor you know, a conductor of the electricity. And this ionization of uh, the water we can represent like we have uh, the water molecule H2O. This is a water molecule. And this water molecule, it ionizes to a very small extent. Like, you know, we have the hydrogen oxygen bond and, you know, we get, you get an H positive and the hydroxyl group, which is negative here. This bond over here between the hydrogen and the oxygen, the oxygen is more electronegative atom, so it takes both electrons. It also has two lone pair of electrons also. So you have a hydroxyl group and you have a H positive proton. But we know that, you know, this proton does not exist alone like this. So we can represent um, the same ionization of the water uh, more, uh, you know, more correctly, like two water molecules. You know, if you say we have the two water molecules like H2 and H2. So when there's an ionization in this bond here, you get a hydroxyl group, you know, this electron, it goes with the oxygen. And you see that you have now a hydroxyl group. This H positive ion, which is released from here, it now interacts with the oxygen because it has two lone pair of electrons, another water molecule. Okay, so it forms a bond with this. So you have an oxygen there with two hydrogen atoms over here. And now this hydrogen, this proton actually, which is released from the water by the dissociation, this actually, you know, this H positive ion does not exist alone. It doesn't exist in the form of H positive rather. It, you know, um, forms a bond with the another water molecule and you get a, you know, actually a coordinate bond is formed because you have a lone pair of electrons on the water and therefore it forms a bond like this. And then you have a positive charge on the H3O molecule, right, on the oxygen here. So we can, you know, uh, represent this ionization of the water like this. This is more accurate. And now when you apply uh, the law of chemical equilibrium to this reversible reaction, we can say the equilibrium constant K will be equal to the concentration of the hydroxyl groups into the concentration of the H3O positive hydronium ion. This is how the, you know, this H positive actually exists, hydronium ion over the concentration of the water power two, right? Because we have two molecules of the water, so you can just square it. Okay, this is uh, the equilibrium constant here. And now uh, since we know that the water is a very poor uh, you know, uh, conductor of electricity, which means that only a very small number of the molecules actually are ionized, right? So if you have, a, you know, suppose you have a one liter of a water, and in the one liter of water, how many molecules of the water are there? Okay, you know, in the one liter of, wa uh, in one liter of uh, water, there are actually, 55.5 moles okay this is the number of the moles of the h2o present in the one liter correct because you know uh, one liter uh, of the water is actually 1000 grams of the water so you can calculate basically the number of the moles in the one one liter you can calculate that number by n will be equal to 1000 okay over the molecular mass of the water is 18, so which comes out to be 55.5. So this is the number of the uh, moles of the water molecules present in the water. And, you know, uh, when small amount of the water molecule dissociates in, in, in one liter, so practically we can see the concentration of this term here, the concentration of the H2 doesn't change, you know, uh, that doesn't change too much. So it remains almost a constant. And if you uh, write down this you know, equation over here, if you can rearrange this particular equation like uh, the concentration of the hydroxyl time with the concentration of the H3O positive equals K into the concentration of the water, right?
concentration of the water scarce. Since, as I said, you know, this concentration here, it almost remains the constant, right? Because uh, the number of water molecules which are actually dissociated are very, very less. And therefore, you can write down another constant here, which is called as an, a dissociation constant of the water, or you can say the ionic product of the water, which will be equal to the hydroxyl group time is concentration of the hydronium ion concentration so this is what you call what we call actually as a ionic product of the water so this is the ionic product of the water ionic product of the water and the ionic product of the water you know this one uh, uh, you know is a, it is constant for a water at the 25 degrees Celsius at a particular temperature you know it has some value right if you change the temperature it will also change suppose you know if you increase the temperature by increasing the temperature what's going to happen by increasing the temperature more and the more water molecule will dissociate so what we find at the zero degree celsius and the 25 degree celsius definitely it will have the different value right so the dissociation constant right at the different temperatures temperatures will have different values suppose if we if you take the temperature uh, you know at the zero degree celsius at the zero degree Celsius, the dissociation constant of the water is a little low, right? It is about 0 0.1 into 10 to the power negative 14, right? This is the dissociation constant of the water at the zero degree. And as you keep on increasing, temp you know, keep on uh, increasing the temperature, let's say the dissociation constant of the water at the 10 degree Celsius. At the 10 degree Celsius, it is a little more, 0 0.3 times 10 to the power negative 14. And at 25 degrees Celsius, you know, this is what we uh, normally take as a, a room temperature. So we can say at the room temperature, it is 1 into 10 to the power negative 14, correct? And again, if you increase the temperature, you know, you can say that dissociation constant of the water will keep on increasing, okay? So let's say at the 30 degrees Celsius, you know, at the 30 degrees Celsius, the dissociation constant of the water is about 1.5 time is 10 to the power negative 14. So we can say this concentration of the hydroxyl and the hydronium ion for a water will, will change at a different temperatures. But for a particular temperature, at room temperature, how much is the dissociation constant of the water? It is 1 into 10 to the power minus 14. Okay. So when you say it is, uh, you know, uh, this is the uh, ionic product of the water, uh, 10 to the power negative 14 so we can actually calculate from here you know from this data we can actually calculate how many water molecules have uh, been dissociated okay so let's you know, let's take this uh, uh, value here the 1 1 into 10 to the power minus 14 at room temperature <coughs> at 25 degrees Celsius the dissociation constant of the water is 1.0 into 10 to the power minus 14 right so which means, uh, you know, how many water molecules have dissociated actually in the one liter of water? You know, you have a one liter of water and there are total 55.5 moles, right? 5.5 moles of the water in it, in the one liter. So if you take the one liter of water, this is the number of the molecules of the water in it. Okay, this is the number of the moles. And now how many water molecules have dissociated? You can see here from this equation, you know, when I say one, you know, hydroxyl ion, and uh, hydronium ion that is equal to 10 to the power uh, negative 14. So I can say it is like this. Since hydroxide ion concentration will always be equal to the hydronium ion concentration, isn't it? Because you know if one water molecule dissociates, you get a one hydroxyl group and a one H3O positive ion. Correct. So the number of the hydroxyl uh, uh, groups, you know, uh, ions will be equal to the number of the hydronium ions. So they will be the same, right? That will be the same. So that means I can represent. I can write down this equation, the dissociation constant of the water. I can, can I write it like, you know, H3O positive into H3O positive because the concentrations are same, right? So which means that this the dissociation constant, which is 10 to the power negative 14 will be equal to the H3O positive squared here, okay? And Therefore, if you want to find out the hydronium ion concentration, hydronium ion concentration, that will be square root of 10 to the power negative 14, which is, you know, 10 to the power negative 7, right? So we cal calculated here the number of the hydronium ion concentration, right? 
hydrogen ion concentration will be 10 to the power negative 7 moles per liter right moles per liter which means that in one liter of the water how many moles of the water have dissociated actually 10 to the power negative 7 now compare the 10 to the power negative 7 you know this is the number of the moles of the water that have dissociated to produce the 10 to the power negative 7 moles of the uh, H3O positive ions and same will be the concentration of the hydroxyl groups right in the water so that means when 10 to the power negative 7 moles of the water dissociate so you get 10 to the power negative 7 moles of the hydronium ions and you get 10 to the power negative 7 moles of the hydroxyl ions so if you compare this number 10 to the power negative 7 moles of the water with 55 moles okay 55.5 moles and 10 to the power negative 7 you can see how you know small this value is so only a very you know a uh, small number of the water molecules have dissociated in a one liter of the water as compared to the 55.5 so that's why we we normally say that the you know this uh, the concentration of the water after dissociation of certain water molecules again remains almost the same doesn't change too much so hope you got it thanks for watching the video bye for now